Hey guys, Anthony, 4 before Diesel. This one is a quick tip on changing the thermostat on a 1KD FTV. So we're just having a look around here. Right, here's the radiator on a Hilux. It's a radiator hose. And there's a housing there that goes into the head. That's not where the thermostat is. So don't even bother opening that up. And if you do, you'll need the gasket for it. Let's go for a bit of a walk around this side while we've got it pulled apart for another job. Show you where the thermostat is right so this is obviously um, at the moment we've got the aircon compressor out of the way you probably don't need to do that to change the thermostat but I just thought while we've got it out of the way on this job we'll show you where the thermostat is where it in fact is now if you remove the compressor back like this and set it there and remove the disconnect the battery and the, the leads to the alternator and the tensioner is out of the way. Below this bracket, this compressor bracket, is the tensioner for the main drive belt, which the alternator mounts on also. And you can see that lower bracket on the alt, that's for the alternator there. So I'll just give you a couple. See, there's a few tips going to be in here while we're at it. That's how we roll. That's why it's important to subscribe and make sure you've got that bell on and keep up with information so you don't fall behind. Um, that bracket there, sometimes they can break, okay? Normally the bolts don't fall out and go missing on their own. But that can happen if someone's worked on it and left it loose. But those brackets, they can break. Beware of that. So part of your service, if you can, have a look up from underneath. Or grab your alternator every now and then. If you see it wobbling around a lot, check out that bracket, okay? And same thing on the Prados. Uh, it might be a different bracket, but same thing. They can break. Now, this one's where's the thermostat. So let's have a look, right? Well, see that? That's the bottom radiator hose coming along there. That's the alloy housing. And your thermostat's in there, guys, right? So there's your two bolts, two 10 mil bolts, one there and one just below. You can see just under there. And it's as simple as that. Now, I just want to give you a bit of a tip. I don't want you to go change your thermostat. It's a pain to get to. They're only 20 or 30 bucks each. And you'll need the rubber O-ring as well if you do decide to change one. But the main point I like to make is these idle are about 83, maybe 84, 85. Anywhere there, I'm happy with that. You don't need to change it, okay? Um... It's not your typical, we're not, we don't owning and working on old Holdens and Fords and things that used to always, every car had a thermostat problem, you know, and you change it and the new one would have a problem in no time, you know, and I'm not being, I'm not joking around there. Some of the thermostats in these cars, they were just absolute rubbish, you know, so I can tell you these are really good. If you find yours idling at 78, and I don't mean you've sat there in cold weather for ages and it's only got up to 78, sometimes you need to drive it, but if you come back to idle, and you're looking at your, and this is a good thing about scan tools. That's why you don't really need to take it out and pop it in boiling water and stuff like that. You can look at the scan tool. If you come back and after a drive and you're sitting there and it's idling and it goes below 82, so if it goes 81, 80, 79, that means it's stuck open, you've got a problem, you need to replace it. Same thing is if you've been driving in, and don't just do it in hot or cold conditions, you do a number of tests. Another reason why it's good to have something that reads your coolant temperature, so you can just keep a monitor on that, learn what it sits at, and when it goes outside of that, and that doesn't mean the weather gets hot, and you're going up a hill and it gets to 89 or whatever it is, that's more your cooling system, your radiator type thing, clean out, get some airflow. It's not your thermostat, guys. The thermostat's going to be open. If it was stuck shut, it'd be overheating. It'd be getting hot real quick, okay? And we don't see that with these. But if you see it, say, in cold weather, and you're sitting there idling in relatively cool weather, and you've been sitting idling for five minutes, and it's still sitting around 87, 88, 89, then you've probably got a problem, okay? So there's a bit of a guide to when to replace your thermostat. Not very often whatsoever. Buy your thermostat and the O-ring for it. Um, you're going to need two bottles of super long life coolant. Um, might as well drop it all out and when I say give it a flush just get what you can out don't put dirty water into the system and contaminate the system water down the mix you never get all the cooling out the best system is keeping it clean like that and regular changes so your first one at the 160k they recommend and then if you haven't done the 160k soon enough I recommend you probably just do it after about six years right so it's one it's six years 160 and then after the first one I'd like you to change it every two years, okay? It's pretty straightforward to do. There's a plug on the bottom of the radiator. You're only ever gonna get about 80% out. But you, you can muck around, but you don't need to. If you do it every two years, and you're getting 80, 90% out, whatever the case may be, you're doing it three or four times more often than you need to, and you're gonna have a cooling system in absolute peak condition, and it's worth it, it's cheap insurance, 
Mate, what's 60, 70, 80 bucks for a couple of bottles of coolant every couple of years? It's absolutely nothing, guys. Cheap insurance. So back over here, you know where the thermostat is. You know what to look at for when to replace it. This one, we're not touching it. We're going to get the rest of it back together. All right, guys, thanks for watching. There's a fairly short one for you, full of information. If you got something out of that, give us a thumbs up. And um, don't forget to subscribe and turn that bell on if you haven't already. And um, I'll be looking in the comments for any ideas on other information you need. Thanks for your support. See ya.